okay, then, 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 it then, then there are no sound drivers, stuff, so it can't yeah. scream. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, unless it's going to scream in TTY, you're good. Yeah. yeah. You just, it boots up. Ah. <laughs> And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, we got a lot of stuff to talk about, up to and including a new Steamy thing from Steam that requires flat packs. But before we get into that, I'm Vin Stone, joined every week by our soon still to be Canadian, Kane <laughs> Podcaster. Look at him, he's Jordan Strong. And over there, that is Pedro Mateo, stand up late past his bedtime on the Isles of Britannia. Join. By you, live chat room dynamic, um, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Before we get started, lads, we like to play a little bit of catch up. I'm going to go ahead and start because I want everyone to be painfully aware, as you might be during this episode. Uh, we're playing with some new stuff. We're playing with Sonobots for our audio, so be prepared for, like, maybe a click, <laughs> pop, sync issues, but... <laughs> At the end of the day, it's ultimately to bring you a better product. So this is the dialing it in. We, we've got past the, huh, all right, well, that kind of works. So over the next few weeks, stay prepared for that. Also, in conjunction with that, playing around with the UDP and stuff like that, uh, I've been getting my butt kicked by Microtech, man. I don't know. This, this is a Stockholm Syndrome or something. Uh, but I'm starting to get some things figured out with the way the things are routed in the studio. And just to keep things even more interesting, I found out that you can run a reasonably sized Jitsi server on a Raspberry Pi for 8 gig. I'm tempted. I, I'm very tempted. I'm, I'm probably going to pick up one just to see what we can get away with. So all types of new things to explode and blow up. Pedro, have you got anything in the mail lately that might do either of those? Um, no. Oh. <laughs> Definitely not enough processing power. But, did you get a uh, hairdryer? Uh, I did get one of these. Uh, one of the, the uh, very cheapo tube preamps kits off of uh, eBay. This one, it's like, hey, if you just want to put one together, it's five pounds Really can't go wrong. And yeah, I put it together. The LEDs come on. I'm currently waiting for the RCA adapter so I can actually plug a headset into it and listen to what it sounds like. Probably not going to be very good. And the other one, um, well, it's uh, an SMD uh, learner. <laughs> I still say it's birth control. Kit. <laughs> no, it's too flat to be birth control. Uh, the <laughs> That's what you think. Just remember, kids, you can uh, bang S for show titles. <laughs> Yes, uh, and yeah, no, the SMDs are positively tiny, so tiny, look at that. <laughs> yeah, How many do you think you're uh, accidentally going to eat? Daunting. <laughs> I think you're going to try to eat some. I think I'll try one <laughs> of the ones that they give spares of. I might try one. Just see I'm, what that tastes like. See how it goes I'm, I'm just looking to forward to like three months later when Pedro has a baby bump. <laughs> 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 Whoa! <laughs> uh, is it a boy or a girl? It's an SMD. Shut up. <laughs> How about you, Jordan? I saw that earlier today you were uh, doing some of the streamy things, and I tuned in. I'm like, oh no, that looks like maths. It's a uh, basic edition. That's that's the extent of the math. That game does require you to do some vector calculus at one point or another, but we didn't get to that part yet. No, I was I was doing some uh, traveler character creation. On stream, I put I made like five characters because it's a fun little mini game. Um, so yeah, I'll probably be doing some more traveler related stuff just because that's what's interesting me right now. Um, also, my penis died in my nuzlocke. Oh man, got got <laughs> chopped off by an enemy ball. <laughs> that's a damn shame. Do you think you'll be able to uh, work in the horse into your upcoming game? No, because the horse died. My horse died. It got <laughs> it got killed in the first five minutes, and now it's beside the steam horse because it's the steam. Linux update, update of the week. Link, oh, you come man. to Linux. Come to <laughs> I don't know. Slam slam hey, on one listen. monitor. Yeah, this is pain. All right, man. Speaking speaking of pain, yeah. So, uh, Steam Link. We were talking about how uh, Valve had recently opened up the ability to 
remote play uh, Steam games without having a Steam account. Didn't have a Linux version of that, but now we do. It's a flat pack. You can get it from Flat Hub. I did a flat hub in, or a flat pack install Steam link and it worked. Uh, you can also just do it through the GUI. Um, and pro tip, if you're going to test it out just to see if it works, do not open it up on the same computer that you are running Steam on because your ears will die. Just die. Uh-huh. <laughs> but it, it, it detected it. It tried to start up a Steam link. I tested it on the TV box. It works. Uh, it works about as well as you could hope. So, yay. I'm 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 down with it. You know, I went ahead and installed Flatpak as one does because I don't keep Flatpak or Snap set up on the Debian boxes. But, yeah, launched it. It slammed immediately into my leftmost screen. I'm like, hey, that's neat. And it didn't want to connect. So, boo. But, I mean, it did launch after downloading like 200 megs worth of depths. If you want to get around that, uh, there'll be a link in the show notes to the tar.gz. And not to be left out, old wimpy, that old wimpy boy done and one made a sn- uh, snap thing. Called it a snap <laughs> If pack. you prefer it to get uh, two or 300 megs worth of snap uh, runtime installed, yeah, you oh, can do that too. I mean, oh, oh, let, oh, let's man. be 100% fair about that as opposed to two, <laughs> two 300 megs of flat pack stuff. I don't, I don't know, because so spe- speaking of Snap, like Sonobus, the Linux install instructions is like, there's a Snap you can use. I'm like, uh, no. No. <laughs> no, I built that shit from no. source. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm on Team Snap, or I'm on Team Flatpak versus But uh, what are the issues Snap, with, like, so. the Snap version of Sonobus? It's like, and it depends on Jack 1. I'm like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, I just don't want to install Snap on my computer. Also fair. <laughs> but, you know, in all fairness, I had to install Flatpak on this box just to Test it out. Yeah. Ah, like, see, okay. that, that, that comes default with Fedora, though, so I didn't have to install anything. Mm. I made sure it was set up as soon as I installed Neon, and yeah, I went to the website, clicked install, Discover showed up. It's like, would you like to install Steam Link? Yes. Done. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Did anybody actually use it? Yeah. Uh, I streamed it to the laptop, and it works. Uh, sound also work which was also one of the things that i always had issues with like the uh steam and home streaming sometimes never, sound would just not get sent over but with this no, it no, works. I've, I've had problems with sound dropping but usually when it starts up it's fine and that's usually also when you like all tab around i don't know um you got maybe, blown out though didn't you yeah uh. maybe i don't know maybe we can play some children's card games Oh, no. <laughs> Not anymore, we can. <laughs> sure we can. It's free. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's Artifact. Steam, tap the motherfucking note button on this, kids. Artifact 2.0 beta is no longer being developed. Uh, you can't develop uh, new games using Valve Time. They learned that the hard way because, you know, if you're pushing out a new game in 2021, you need things like the ability to move quick, pump out updates, and, you know, communicate with the player base. Well, what Valve chose to do with the artifact, uh, which is now completely free to play. So, you know, admittedly, I downloaded it, installed it, launched it, and went, nope. A lot (laughs) going on there. But, like, Valve with Artifact, which is was their card trading playing game. Mm -hmm. Hearthstone competitor. Here's what they did with it. You know, they stopped updating it. Uh, They basically broke off any communications. Uh, They never met any of their roadmap targets. Again, this is Valve, and... All the while, just to keep things fun, it wasn't a closed beta. Mm-hmm. And, you know, shocked Pikachu.jpg, man. Uh, <laughs> I, I, Artifact was interesting. I don't know. Well, one of the it, things they said in the announcement was, you know, well, we haven't managed to get the active player numbers to a level that justifies further development this time. Uh, see what I just said? I was like, yeah, yeah, you did everything <laughs> to get... There, there's also, like, fu- fundamentally, I think... Artifact was a response to people were not were bouncing off a of hearthstone because it was a little too oversimplified. They didn't want to go to magic because they didn't want to play magic the gathering. So they tried to do something that was more complicated than either of them. And I think that was where it fell apart. Cause like I I'm pretty good when it comes to tracking how games work. I watched a 30 minute tutorial video on how to play artifact. I'm like, no, fuck, fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
but th now, now that all the cards are freely available, uh, now the floodgates are open because CCGs are incredibly metagame based. And part of that metagame is the availability of certain cards. So certain strategies evolve to counter certain popular decks based on availability cards. Once that's no longer a thing, all you get is cheese. People are going to find the dominant strategy and that's all you're going to be playing. So if you like playing really cheesy shit and you want an exploitable game, Artifact is now your, your go-to, I guess. Oh yeah, and uh, at least it's free. The uh, finally Valve, after all this time. Oh, let's compete with Hearthstone. Yeah, Hearthstone had one thing going for it. It was free, and they even went out of their way to get Richard uh, Richard Garfield. You know, Magic the Gathering person. Get him on board to create a new trading card game. I was all like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Valve working with the MDG guy creating a new card game. Bring it. I look I forward to that 10-hour gift. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> but, uh, but Pedro, no. <laughs> Pedro agrees super cut. Shook me on. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> if uh, this doesn't get people playing, and according to Fen, it apparently won't. <laughs> it, it didn't, man. I went and pulled up the graph. I posted it in our Discord. Go check that out. Uh, like, this thing, the day on, like, that afternoon after, it's like, it's completely free to play. And everyone, even people like me, was like, launched it for the first time in the history of ever. I'm like, yeah, nope. It got up to like 600 people. I mean, it was like <laughs> negative fucks given the release. Now, I'll ask you, Jordan, since you're a bit more tuned into this. Do you think releasing like uh, maybe not necessarily with source, but definitely like mod support to this could give it some type of life? I think so. I would like to see it open source. I would like to, cause like, I don't, I, again, not, not being crazy familiar with the rules. Maybe, maybe there's a good game buried in here somewhere, right? Like, mm. Yeah, Val, 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 you just Val, cut off the other two games and just have the one. As yeah, I. well, I mean, <laughs> maybe maybe that's what it is. I don't know. I haven't been involved in the design of Artifact, but it does seem like it would be a lot of development, a lot of game design gone to waste. It would be cool if Valve open sourced it. Uh, but I mean, that that's kind of our hope with any sort of abandoned project. Maybe they'll open source it or maybe in 15 years, someone will uh, some disgruntled former employee will just <laughs> dump a hard drive on the Internet. And <laughs> Hey, yeah, if you figure it out. <laughs> so mm, we get another portal update. We do mm -hmm. two weeks in a row too. Uh, clearly, someone is very, very happy that they finally get to play around with Portal Two. And looking through the uh, release notes, a lot of that seems to be well relating to the new DXVK update, which we will be talking about later on. So, Spoilers. <laughs> yeah, uh, a lot of those specifically overlap the DXVK update, so I was like, oh, that's what you did. Okay. But yeah, the what they seem to be doing, it's clearly someone got a chance to play with Portal. It's like, okay, let's go play around with the sauce and see what I can change, see what I can improve. And it, yeah, it's it's a new toy. I get I get those same feels when I get a new laptop. It's like, okay, let's throw Linux on it and now let's make it work as good as possible until it just breaks. I, I, I get that. <laughs> I still maintain that this is also probably motivated at least by someone in Valve saying like, hey, let's proof a concept just like converting a DirectX game into a Vulcan game using this so we can start mm -hmm. selling it to other people so that they could just start using Vulcan and testing oh, against yeah. Dixvix. <laughs> it definitely could be. I mean, I'm genuinely with both of you as I, I'm curious as what got them dicking around with um old code base is effectively like, hey, we haven't done this. You know what? Go ahead and throw this throw this over in Left for Dead. And while you while you're playing around with Left for Dead, unfuck some of those load times. <laughs> could could you imagine Vulcan meet the Freemans? Yes. <laughs> oh, speaking of, it looks like we're gonna be doing some uh Doom coop, Some do so stay we're, tuned. We're, we're going to sing the Doom song? Yeah. <laughs> doom, 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 doom. <laughs> Last night, in fact, uh, Pedro and I did our first maiden voyage on it. While, well, after we finished, I'm uh, playing a little bit of Pocket Cars, man. Pocket Cars has uh, got a new update. It's not 0.75. Got yeah, arena events. Debatable. Private rooms they exist. Invite friends at works. Sync physics objects. But kind of sad I missed out when that wasn't working. And reduce the explosion delay for some weapons but there's other small changes kids and the big one the big one they've added windowed mode because Yay! <laughs> that doesn't sound like much this is something i posted a couple of weeks back in their forums when what was this game on sale for like 10 bucks or something like that 
Yeah, that was during the Chinese New Year yeah. sale. Yeah, it was in early access. So I'm like, all right, fine, I'll get it. And there's no window mode. If I couldn't get a window mode, there's no way to stream it. So I, I dropped that in there for I'm glad to see that was added simply because this game ignored the Unity Press file and mm-hmm. you couldn't get like the Unity Scream of Nope on. So they fixed that. I was very happy to see it. Now, when it comes to uh, controller rumbling, yeah. They, they've made it, it shorter because apparently a feature <laughs> of this game is not a bug, according to them, is as soon as you start the game in a text controller, it takes off across your desk. And <laughs> controller racing. That's the real RC car. <laughs> this, this is no joke. That's a lovely sound on a glass desk um, while you're in the midst of like having a fuck mothering panic attack. It's like, what the? Uh, <laughs> good times. Good times. Um, now. Now that I put some time in it, I, I got to say, it's got performance issues. Uh, we didn't really run into that last night. I think it's most of, like if you're playing in single player mode, once you get a couple of cars in there, it, it can get real shitty. I mean, it can go down to like 30 to 40. Apparently two people multiplayer with a 2060 and a 1080. Not bad. Just fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Runs all right. Between 50 and 70. So yeah. <laughs> I think we have a problem there. Um, now, smashing the proton button out of curiosity didn't improve things though. No, <laughs> which is odd because what they were saying in the uh, Steam forums is that uh, they're aware that the Linux version is a little flaky when it comes to performance. And yes, much, much like Ven, I have experienced that where <laughs> uh, it will just freeze in the middle of a race completely unprovoked it's like uh you're gonna move and then it starts back up again. It's like, oh, OK. All right. Uh, but yeah. I'd assume that 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 was just the Linux version, but no, no, no. Apparently, it's present on the Windows version too. And one of the things that they changed, which I liked very much, is one of the weapons in the game is like a freeze rocket that you can send at someone, and they get frozen in place for a certain amount of time. It used to be three and a half seconds. They lowered that to like two seconds now. I think uh, that. Yeah, thank you for that, because that was going from first place to last, <laughs> just getting hit with one of them. Well, I'm glad they got it sorted out. Um, it, it still needs quite a bit of work before it's going to be fun. Biggest thing they need to add for multiplayer online, if you're listening, is want to get rid of that horrible siren when you're out of range, because that's annoying, too. We <laughs> Right. We also, we need some bots to play against, because just me playing against Pedro, I'm just constantly getting wrecked. Oh, and a playlist so you can queue up a yes, bunch of tracks. So you don't have to stop yeah. after every match and redo that. So Loop Hero, that's that's kind of a popular thing. And at least when I say popular thing, I mean uh Evolver Digital was like, hey streamers, uh get out there and uh I, go play. It definitely looks interesting. Uh you know what? Kinda does, I guess. You know, I was looking at the lick leech has thrown into a timeless loop, plunged inhabitants, and da da da. Roguelike, so it's a card game, it's 2D, it's pixely. I don't know, what's there not to love, Jordan, because I'm looking at it and I'm like, this kind of comes across as maybe reverse tower defense, maybe? As far as I can tell, it looks like, yeah, it's it's, it's a little bit of, it's a little bit of tower defense, it's a little bit of dungeon keeper. <clears throat> Um, but basically the idea is like you build levels that your hero can like get strong again so they can level up and kill the final boss, which is an interesting concept that normally when you have like a dungeon keeper style game, it's from the, the perspective of the bad guy and you're trying to kill the dude. Now you're trying to get them as buff as possible. Um, some some game designers that I really respect um, have been singing its praises. Maybe that's because Devolver gave the money. Maybe not. I don't know. But <laughs> well, I'm, no, okay. I, I, I definitely well, hope they're going to send us some keys. When I, I say that, I'm talking it. about reviews. I'm talking about streaming because if you read oh, yeah, people yeah. who are streaming, it's like ad, ad, ad. You know, that's a common thing. You get paid to stream games, and Devolver's like, hey, mm-hmm. people go play it. That's one of the interesting dynamics. I was like, is this is that a good way? Because you get introduced to games usually by people that you normally watch who are streaming games. Mm-hmm. what's the cycle with it? Does that get people curious to go yeah. play it themselves? And does it get smaller streamers trying to, you know, the copy of what the bigger streamers like, that seems like a very if effective it's a marketing. really popular yeah. game. Yes, it absolutely has that knock on effect of other streamers also wanting to 
get in on the money. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean that that's kind of the the Leviathan that is Twitch and YouTube, right? Mm. Is you're you're constantly chasing that dragon. But yeah, uh, it it seems cool. Uh, I definitely want to try it out. Um, Help me uh, out with what the hell this game is. This game. All right. So as far as I can tell, aside from having really creepy legs, like you saw that, that's a <laughs> right. uh, mm -hmm. homeboy got legs and you know how to use them. So Star uh, Star Picker is uh, it's a navigation game. So if you've played Sea of Thieves, if, if you've watched uh, some of the Sea of Thieves stream, streams we've done on Thursday, uh, a big part of the game is like they give you a map that it's, and it's not like a mini map or an auto map. You actually have to use it to navigate the place and find things. So this is a game kind of built around the navigation of that sort with a lot of parkour elements. And they have a couple, uh, they got a couple game modes here. They got some casual explorey ones and they got some speed runny ones for people who want more challenge. Uh, it, I don't know. I kind of want to see this with like multiplayer, like a scavenger hunt thing. That would be okay. kind of neat. That's the only way that it would be kind of neat. I have yet to play a proper parkour map. I never got into uh, the AAA one that came out for the consoles. Um, Mirror's Edge. Generation. Mirror's Edge. Yeah, thank you. Where are no, we at for that game? Because that thing goes on sale for like 90 cents all the time. Like, do, do I, I have like it. That? I have it, and I've never played it. Maybe okay. I, maybe I need to stream it. I, 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 I don't have it. Never played it. Never Admittedly, really felt the, the need to play it. the only reason I'm even remotely <laughs> interested in it is because so it's sped run, speed run. What? How do you say? Uh, yeah. What's the Sped past run? tense? Sped run? Sped run? Speed speed run? Speed run? I, I speed ran. ran. Speed ran? Yeah. That doesn't sound right, but it's probably... Spe <laughs> speed Roxon? Yeah, Speed Roxon. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, parkour mobs never really um, engaged me. I do like the, ex the exploration aspect and the fact that you have to make sense of the map. Exanima, for example, mm -hmm. game what uh, I did a series of uh, for the Tuesday streams. That that those maps were literally just sheets of paper. Mm. That's it. Now figure it out. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, refactor physics puzzles. Yes. Speaking squiggle. of uh, the physics, uh, Be refactor. The it's a physics-based platformer uh, that uh, takes elements from classic Metroidvanias, or so they describe it. It's not currently available yet. They say winter 2021 is when they're looking for it to be available. Honestly, looking at the... Um, Murder Cube. Yes. <laughs> looking at the trailer, uh, it's interesting. I'm looking I'll at the mechanic right now, and basically you can do a like cube morph type thing. And yeah, you, you you can be a lion. Yeah. You can be a Tetris, like Tetris the platformer. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, no, it is very interesting. I'll give it that, but uh, I guess we'll have to wait till the winter. I mean, it is technically still winter, so uh, maybe it's Australian winter. Could be July then. Brazil <laughs> Brazilian winter. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Puzzle games like this always get me a little excited because I like when people try to do something a little bit new, a little bit different. Yes. And um, like th this could go, it could go color cube or it could go sausage roll. I, I get a little bit of a, and yet it moves uh, vibe from it. Could With make. the rotation, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and graphically it looks great. So. Yeah. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Cool. Knows. Hopefully it won't be as uh, barf inducing as, uh, and yet it moves on some of the later levels. <laughs> What about them crazy wheels? Do you get any crazy guys to go along with it? Mm, crazy wheels. Now, uh, myself and Ven are big fans of the uh, racing genre. Not so much. But uh, this one is, uh, well, it's clearly aping the Micro Machines style of racing. They say Action the- Action Hank uh, the gonna sue somebody. Lava. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the floor is lava. Relieve your childhood dream races around the house with crazy wheels. Literally Micro Machines. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. You're, from what I could see of the screenshots Jeez. in the trailer, you're either driving on the ground through a very narrow path, or you're driving on top of some random household object down a very narrow path, surrounded by some cliffs or some edges of the thing what you're driving on. And that seems incredibly frustrating, because that's the... Failure state when it comes to th those kinds of games. That's the failure state. It shouldn't be what you're aiming for. You shouldn't base your entire game around a failure state. <laughs> that's that's Fall Guys though, or not Fall? Yeah, that is Fall Guys. Eh, sort of. <laughs> that, that, Although then again, Fall Guys uh, is now owned by Epic, literally. Yeah. So, 
Who knows? <laughs> There's man. the failure state right there. Teardrop. <laughs> so do you think everyone's love for this? Uh, when, when we see like the uh, little machines in the big world uh, of a certain age, and everyone goes, I remember playing that in Unreal Tournament. That was a great map. Hmm. But no one liked when you went up to them with the impulse gun and just knocked them off the edge. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure Steve would absolutely love this game, though. Like, this is right up his alley, playing with little toy cars. Yeah. yeah. I, I will wait and see. I do like that, even though it is very clearly Micro Machines inspired, it does seem to have the, like rear camera mm -hmm. the follow the car camera instead of the helicopter one that, if it's that, that, done good man come on like, yeah you know, oh i'll play the snot out of it like i think both me and you were a little bit like grumpy about like pocket cars right now it's like you got the pieces there oh yeah it it just needs to be a little better <laughs> right. well a lot better yeah, but, but it, it it's, it's heading more in better. the right direction yes. at least <laughs> definitely more better more but, betterer Oh this, oh, this has got hex things in it. I'm not going to like it. Oh, yo, baby. Oh, baby. This is right up my fucking alley. I, I see this name, Urturk, and I think of... That one. Uh, no, but um, it's an open-world, tactical, turn-based RPG in a low-fantasy setting. It has hexagonal-based movement. I love hexagonal-based movement. It has Fedora 25 as a system requirement, so you can play it on set.screams. It's even got like a clippy in the bottom corner. It does. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a grid-based tactics game. I like it. Um, it kind of reminds me a bit of uh, that one game. Um, I, f I forget I forget what it's called. It was by the um, by the Castle Crashers dude. It was also like a hex-based sort of tactics game. Never came to Linux. This one is on Linux, though. It's a little expensive, but I think I'm definitely going to pick it up. Um, it Darkest Dungeon. Dark. That's not bad. Yeah. Darkest Dungeon tactics. very Darkest Dungeon-y, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. If, the if, aesthetics and yeah, this is the the game that myself and Jordan uh, have in common that I'm looking at that uh, ooh, I, I'm getting some uh, Final Fantasy Tactics type of situation going. It's like, yes, please. With yeah, the Darkest give, give Dungeon aesthetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gimme, give gimme. Give yeah, I wanna. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Yeah, um, again, really hope they send us some keys, you guys. You know, uh, we, got, we, got, we got a contact form. We got a curator no, connect page. This is rubbish show. Don't. Uh, <laughs> nope, never. Never. Don't, don't waste your keys. Ah, Please do. Please do. <laughs> waste Come. a bunch of them. We could give away the rest. It's cool. <laughs> Coming up next, wine gets flattened, Dix Vix gets a new release, and you can do something on Haiku finally. Hi. Let's uh, let's get on to the news. Well, let's hold on a second on the news because first we do need to thank you. Everyone who's been watching and decided, you know what? I like what these guys are doing. Let's uh, let's make sure they can keep doing it. Thank you. By thank making you so it rain. <laughs> making it rain making penguins, man. Only that one time, man. Raiding <laughs> penguins Listen, from I told a lacerated you. sky. A, they couldn't fly. B, we're probably going to get in trouble. <laughs> Thankfully, penguins we ended up in jail. Penguins can fly if you add enough kinetic energy. And if you want to help fund our penguin railgun, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast, where there's a there's a multitude of ways or a multitude of uh, levels you can support that. Uh, anyone gets you access to the Discord channel, which is really cool because we do the pre-pre-super shows. Which you can also get by uh, kicking us some of Big Papa Bezos' money. Because That's uh, true, yeah, if you get an Amazon Prime, so if you drop that in, sync it up, boom, you're all you, put on you Discord. You do. Uh, you can get access to our show notes. Uh, you can get access to the video version of the pre pre super shows, and you can even buy your way on the show if you want. If you just mm -hmm. want to give us a shit ton of money, you could you can come on here and just talk to us and be an asshole. It, it only requires one shit ton of money. One shit ton of money. Yes. Per yes. visit, I guess. Um, Syllable. <laughs> ind indeed. Uh, we got a store store at linuxgamecast.com. You should definitely check that out. Buy some t-shirts. Buy some mugs or some sweaters or some stickers put there it is on, put them on people you like put them on people you don't like you'll get the same result either way so uh, go for it i i don't know man sometimes people get a little ornery when you uh try to shirt them when when when, when you when you slap a helix sticker on them <laughs> on the back of their head okay when not buy looking. a couple of different stickers and put them on your nipples that way no one can you know no, blame no, you for no. indecency you gotta, you gotta get the sticker up first and you blind them with it but there you go <laughs> one stick one sticker on each eye yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what, the, <laughs> what the hell else are you doing? Uh, we got Wish Zones. Uh, if you want to help uh, us put together our studios, uh, Ven has one for the studio. There's one for Jordan. Look at yeah, that. It's got a go, bar. Go, 
It's got a barbell. It's got an <laughs> SSD. It's got a squat rack. It's got some plates. I'm moving too. So if you buy me any of the stuff, I'm going to have to transport it's it. It's a nice, uh, uh, you got the RE 320. <laughs> That's going to be like their next upgrade because, uh, Pedro's got his in the wrong spot, but you can't buy it. Uh, what do you That's have, why Pedro? it's down there. <laughs> Pedro, what are you going to do with no bull music, your premium axle? Why do you want three different colors? What's wrong with you? Those and are the colorful ones that you told me to add to my wish list, which I did. <laughs> And a regular one. <laughs> See, this is you get it, your son. I, I, I'm more, I'm more offended by all these heat sinks on these MVME drives. I, I don't know. I, I don't care about the heat sinks. I just care about the SSDs. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Release the cracking. We do have one for the studio. Uh, there's the pie. I'm gonna try to make a Jitsi server out of that. That this microtech thing is gonna be needed for this nonsense that we're doing with this UDP bullshit word clock. Just studio stuff. Or, yeah, if you yeah. if you if you get us some stuff off the wish lists, if you get it on Vens, you get the shiny names and the like, shiny zones behind them. Carl, Either. Mike, Basil, Arthur, and Linux, New, Aldius, and Nox. See, I can read it if I turn around and don't try to read yeah. it off the camera. Yes. If, 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 if you just if you put if you, your face in front of the glare, yeah. Yeah. if you just rotate your head like an owl, 180 degrees. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Snap, um, just. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and, you know, if you send us some stuff, you can send us a little love letter with your Amazon package. We have to read it on the air. Not if it's like too crazy or racist or anything like that, but within, within reason, we'll we'll read what you tell us to. Screw reason. Anything that won't land me in jail. <laughs> Pedro's easy. Indeed. All right. So let's I guess, I guess let's get into it. Uh, there's a new version of Dick's Fix out. 1.8.1. It's kind of minor. It's some DX uh, DX nine bug fixes. Yeah. Some stuff for Mafia two and Warhammer Online. Those are constantly getting updated. So I think like they're 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 having a back and forth battle to try and get these games just. It is working. interesting when you see stuff like that because I played all the way through Mafia two without any issues. I, mm -hmm. I guess it's when mostly it, for AMD GPUs. Yeah, oh, that okay. that yeah. seems to be the big one here. Uh, which also uh, brings us back to the Portal two thing earlier, which is spoilers. The improve. Yeah, <laughs> reverse spoilers in this case. The uh, um, MSA performance on the Rad V drivers. It was uh, the Portal Two update had that. This has that. So oh, that's what you did. You just upgraded the internal version of DXVK that's currently your render. Right on. <laughs> that, that's that's usually what happens when you update your drivers. Sometimes you get better yep. performance. Man, listen, AMD is not meant for playing games or for production work under Linux, Pedro. Unless you, you know, <laughs> it's for mining you try Bitcoin. Try to install their drivers. As long as you it's for mining data, Bitcoin. You, yes. <laughs> Uh, flat packs and wines and thirty-two. Oh my! So Steam does a thing called pressure vessel, right? Yep. Yep. And that is their containerized runtime. Which is, in theory, a great thing. As soon as they make the damn thing work reliably with Mango Hut, until then, it's a dumpster fire. It's completely useless. And mm -hmm. maybe we could try that same approach outside of Steam. That seems to be the operating thing here, because uh, Fast Rizwan, I'm not entirely sure that's their real name, but that's the <laughs> Git uh, handle they decided to go with. They have created a flat pack for 32-bit wine. That's, yeah, you just uh, install the flat pack and you get a self-contained version of 32-bit wine in whatever system you happen to be running, which you can use to run your 32-bit Windows applications, which is great. That is absolutely amazing. See, I can and respect this person. They're tracking Debian. Bullseye too. Well, yeah. Well, yep. Team well now, 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 a bunch you can finally drop thirty-two bit support like they always wanted, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. They can, but it's not a snap; it's a flat pack. So that, that's, that's it. Oh no! Oh no! no. <laughs> it, in, yeah, that's what you end up with, man. You end up with like the Ubuntu thirty-two bit flat pack. Yeah. <laughs> flat, no, no, it, it, it's it's a snap for flat pack, so you can install this. Oh man! Yeah, th th that is. A, very well done, and he did a very good job with the uh, integration. Uh, you can run it in CentOS 7 or Debian or whatever supports flat packs because it's a flat pack. That's the beauty of it. And yeah, it's right click yeah, yeah. open with flat pack Wine 32. You also get Wine Tricks. You can get uh, just yeah. the system version, uh, system wide install of Wine Tricks. You just have to launch the flat pack. And then run the wine tricks command off of that. There's if you're if you're on NVIDIA, you do got to install the drivers too. That's mm. kind yes, of the, 32 yeah. bit drivers. <laughs> Hi, Steam. 
Which you already have because Steam, yeah. <laughs> right, since you've already installed your Steam link, man, they're already there. Let's yeah. face it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What what's the use case? Why is this so handy? I mean, outside of just having like a bunch of wine prefixes for couldn't I use something just like Lutris? You could. You could. Man, is Lutris available as a flat pack? Probably. No. Oh. <laughs> no, Lutris is snap only. I, I see how it goes. <laughs> I see I see how is this works. Is there a containerized version of Lutris at all? Yeah, well, it's not the, official. There isn't. Yeah, but. it's in the Wayland repo. <laughs> we 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 gotta wait for the chat delay so that the maker of Lutris can answer us live. It is well, there. It is. All right. All right. Okay. Done. That's been solved. All right. All right. Flat wide. Nice. War zone. Let's talk about it. Twenty one hundred. It's been around for since the Everman, and there is a new version, a four zero zero beta one. It is available. This is pretty much a uh, graphics API, all the things, man. Uh, they're adding support for Vulkan 1.0, OpenGL ES 3.0, and it's also 2.0. DirectX, whatevs, that's there. And uh, Via lib mm, angle, what yeah. the? <laughs> Dark magic, man. Metal kind of improve, uh, impressed me a little bit, man, because they're using the Molten VK for the Vulkan to metal. And, that's uh, the easy way to do it, apparently. <laughs> dude, if it gets the job done. Engine enhancements, hundreds of bug fixes, um, quality of life, and smoothness improvements. That sounds naughty. But it's all there. 940 commits since the last version. Have you ever played the uh, 2100? I played it a long time ago when we didn't have, like, m- much to play. I had never been much I, of a I, real-time strategy person. Yeah, <laughs> I I think I launched it once. Oh, fine. I probably tried it at some point, yeah. <laughs> but, well, get, no. get ready to install it now, live on stream, ladies Dude, and gentlemen. We could, we could install the Snap. It's got dev packages for 1804, 2004, it's good. And more. And more. I thought that's uh, just interesting, because I always like when uh, you see Floss applications, because you're future-proofing things, no matter whether or not you want to admit it, moving to Vulkan off of OpenGL, because you just that's just how things work. Although yeah. their DirectX that's implementation is based off of NGL, that's that's a little fucky. You, this is why you need to use Dixfix. Please use <laughs> Dixfix. But my God, it's using lib angle, which is something that uh, Alex, the developer of uh, Project Artbeat, keeps going on about. Artbeat? Apparently, you yard get a lot beats. better performance. Yard uh, beat. Artbeat. Beat uh, that yard. <laughs> you get a lot better performance uh, with the AMD drivers if you run it via lib angle rather than if you just run it natively okay. on OpenGL. So I don't know. Figure that one out. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you can use the DX9 state tracker and Mesa for it. Well, uh, that would be a little heroic. I don't know. I, uh, we do need a hero, don't we? I need a hero. Yeah, uh, hold enough for a hero till the end of the night. Uh, Heroic Game Launchers, they have a new version. It's 1.5.5. What is it? You never heard of it. It is the Epic Games Launcher that's not Lutris for Linux. Mm -hmm. It's open source. uses Legendary to download your games. And yeah, this version has just a lot of like quality of life for downloading things. There's a progress bar, which I'm cu- I'm curious what kind of liar algorithm they've u- chosen for like the progress bar. Um, better localization. Uh, you can, uh, ch- it'll check for updates for games uh, now that once it starts up as well. So just some nice stuff. They added a discord link, nothing too crazy, but it looks like uh, things are starting to really stabilize on the project. So good on them for that. Uh, yeah, it's been kind of interesting to see the uh, progress this has made. And it's kind of breaking up. Mm-hmm. I'm down with it. Pedro, it, have you it, installed it? It has been a very quick development. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fine. <laughs> I'm surprised that uh, Strider hasn't, you know, Lutris the whole thing, but uh, <laughs> give him time. <laughs> I, I mean, like, L- Lutris is more like a general game manager. If you're just really interested in getting free games from Epic because they can't sell games on their own damn store, they gotta oh, give yeah. them if away. If you just then... want the one thing to do that, there you go. <laughs> yeah. You know what? When Epic first started with that nonsense, uh, I a bit. I'm like, hey, all right. It, it, now it's not even, it's been normalized. I'm like, I'm take my time to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I get it one free game every week that I already have on Steam. I'm like, yeah, I don't care. Uh, hey, I, I got a copy of GTA 5, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I already have that on Steam, too. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't, so <laughs> go me. It's my lucky day. There you go. So, you know, you know, you go out and you're having fun and uh, you're like, hey, mom, 
can we get a mind test or Minecraft? Your mom's like, no, we got, we got Minecraft at home. We got Minecraft at home. <laughs> I, don't, I, I thought you were like, you're going out, you see a tree, you start punching it and yeah. it turns into a bunch of wood. <laughs> yeah, mind test. They have a, they have a new version out. Uh, they've moved from 530 to 5.4.0. There is a huge ass change log here. Control F Linux returns nothing, but I did notice that now it supports Haiku. So for those of you running Haiku, you have something to do now. Congratulations. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of like um, modding support, security fixes, just random game balance stuff. If you are someone who actively plays mind test, a lot of this will make sense to you. I read through all of it. And so were you kind of like me? Like, oh, this is a game where you punch trees and shit. Yeah, yes. kind of. Uh, I mean, to me, the same thing, my, my, my entire experience, even like Minecraft Java version all those years ago, I'm like, oh, well, let's draw a giant dick and crawl up here and look at it. All right. That's it. I'm out. <laughs> that's what a lot of people did. Yes. <laughs> and then people but, started and, fucking around and like making Game Boys. No, I'm fascinated. Entire processors. Yes. I'm, and, I'm yeah. fascinated by the creativity that that unlocked. But for me, it's just not my jam. But mine test, uh, by all accounts, is probably the best um, when it comes to floss versions of, you know, things along the same oh, All right, It is definitely the most complete one. And uh, I was going to try it on the one HP laptop that I have that is running uh, Haiku. But that I completely forgot that that battery is completely uh, shot. So if you let it completely die, then... Yeah, good luck getting it back to life without shorting the two. <laughs> yeah, so practice yeah. soldering with that battery then. Yeah, no, uh, I need to get a new battery for it uh, because it's not a terrible laptop, but it yeah, it needs a new battery. I so. killed it, Pedro. <laughs> Maybe it needs a better no, operating no, system. No, the battery was uh, if I booted um, like Ubuntu on it, it would mm. scream like your battery is in poor condition. You should replace it. I mean, really? usually when computers. <laughs> Usually computers just generally scream at you when you install Ubuntu on them. So. Yeah. Fair. <laughs> Absolutely it, it, fair. Do, 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 do people install Ubuntu and not have their computer scream at them? I'm, I'm unclear on this. Oh, well, you can install Ubuntu server. Or KDE, <laughs> then, then, uh, then, then, then there are no sound drivers, so it can't yeah. scream. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, unless it's going to scream in TTY, you're good. Yeah. No. You just, it boots up. <laughs> just remove the PC speaker. It's like the, there are no beeps, <laughs> no no more screaming for you. Only man, if we're just doing the di distro thing, man. I upgraded uh, both of these co-host boxes to Debian uh, testing, which you know I'm tracking bullseye. That apparently activated the PC speaker in both of these. So when I cut them off, that made me jump the first time. Like bah, uh, beep, beep, beep. <laughs> it was about that time, old man Vin realized that they had PC speakers in them. Like, okay, that's still a thing. All right, absolutely. Tanks. Yes, uh, it's Tags of Freedom, which is a game, speaking of flatbacks, that I only saw because I started up Athenium, because I liked every now and then to just start it up and go through the list of games that are being bundled up as flatbacks, and this one was uh, uh, on the uh, top banner, and it's like, ooh, that looks a lot like uh, Into the Breach, so I clicked on it, went to their Git, oh, the last update was a beta, and it was submitted in, like, 2018, around the same time that Into the Breach was released, and that's the OUYA controller, uh, and, yeah, it, it seems to, the presentation is very, very similar to uh, Into the Breach, but the gameplay seems more in line with the traditional yeah, uh, more strategy. Yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, if, if, if you played anything like Advance Wars, this looks pretty familiar. Uh, Fire yep. Emblem also follows a similar formula as well. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's 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 neat. Um, also here, there's like less of an emphasis on the uh, sort of perfect information uh, setup mm -hmm. that Into the Breach has. This is just more traditional routing. But you know what? I'm all for more good base strategy games like this. Well, something so. both of you are kind of burying is this available on mobile, too. It is. Uh, yeah. They have an Android version. Yes. The, uh, the, 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 the very same uh, two, three-year-old beta is available on Google Play. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> Maybe they got it right the first time, Matthias. I mean, okay. I, I did play it, and did, I got through the first three or four missions without any issues, so... Mm. Mm. <laughs> That's the furthest anyone has played. If you get to level five, yes. the game just deletes your root partition. <laughs> it is done. 
<laughs> All right. Coming up next. Uh, if you if you pee in the laser cup, please make sure to wash your hands afterwards. Welcome, Jack. Welcome, Welcome Jack. Jack. Welcome. I've been thinking about Jack audio pipelines. Welcome back to the Sharequisition. This week, we're taking a look at Laser Cup. Maybe because you jack off. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's developed by Dream Labs. Done on Unity. You can pick it up for five bucks. What is it? Have you ever wondered what it would be like to play air hockey with bumper cars? No. Uh, then Laser Cup is the ideal game for you. Select one of eight teams to compete in high pa- high paced physics based Fight the online menu. menu. Right, Jesus Christ! I'm, I'm, yeah. So we'll, we'll get to that in a second. We got to thank you, thanks, uh, thanks to the devs, Dream Labs, for sending us some keys over Curator Connect. This time I go first because we're all tied in score. Uh, so uh, on uh, the AMD system, which is the 5700 XT and the i7 6700 XK, uh, yeah. Uh, 6700K. Um, Launch out of the box. Same with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti. No real issues. God damn, what the fuck is up with this menu? It is bad if you try to use a mouse. Kind of works with keyboard, but... Uh, also, don't try and adjust the resolution in windowed mode. Do it in full screen first and switch it, because it doesn't resize the window properly. Um, Looks-wise, it's very, very simple, and a bit to its detriment, because of the, the character blindness. We'll get to that in a little bit. Sounds... There's not really much in the sounds. There's, like, the Tron bleeps and bloops. It's very, very PC speaker. It's like what happens when you install Ubuntu on a computer. Uh, Fun-wise, yeah, oh god, that character blindness. I tried playing with like three bots and I just lost my dude all the time. It doesn't help also that you can switch between the AI controlled guys. Uh, so yeah, good luck finding out where wherever you are if you're not play if you're playing in- with more than two characters. Um, yeah, I, I don't I don't know. I've I have no idea what the hell's going on at any point. I feel like this game would probably be improved if I had like five other humans here that I could trash talk with, but like no one's really playing the game. And when I played with then he kicked my ass. So I don't, I don't know. Um, the bots aren't very helpful in that regard. There's not really much going on here. Like, uh, especially with the, with the no player count. One thing I do wish that this game had though is a tutorial, at least like explain to me how I should be approaching this game and also what the hell the power ups do. Cause apparently there are power ups in this game. Uh yeah, I'm I'm gonna give it one share. It's it's lacking a lot. This is an early access game that got released. Yeah, and over here on uh the Ryzen 7 3700X with the GTX 1080 and uh running on KDE Neon, it launched that of the box. It seems to be capped at uh 60 FERPs, so you can tell that uh that option for VSync is a damn filthy lie, which is odd because it's Unity. Uh, that usually does pretty good with the 144, so Clearly, someone went out of their way to make it um, 60 FPS. There's also this annoying CRT filter and a fake static effect that I wish there was an option to disable. In fact, I wish there were options for a great deal many things, including rebinding the controls, because you can't. Minus one chair. And I'll... In the past, I have forgiven games for not giving you an option to rebind controls. If, say, they mirrored whatever was to the uh, directional cursor keys on the other side of the keyboard. I could deal with that. And in this game, you have uh, the left side shift, control, and alt as your action keys plus space for movement. Why couldn't I have, say, the actual cursor keys be those, or at least the right side alt, control, and shift mirrored from the left side? So you went... Uh, with a completely stupid ass backwards um, layout for your controls, at least as far as the keyboard is concerned. The controller was kind of all right, but the uh, keyboard ones were just god awful. And you did release the game on PC, so <laughs> sorry. Minus one share on that one. And uh, yeah, when it comes to not mirroring the. Com- the key bindings from one side of the keyboard to the other, well, not everyone uses the mouse on their right hand. Some of us like to use it on their left hand. So that elitist bias isn't getting you any favors, at least as far as I'm concerned. And that's kind of a real shame, because when we get into the fun, well, I did kind of rotate my keyboard 90 degrees so I could have those keys as far away from the mouse as I could possibly um, have. 
And at that point, the game started to become kind of fun because I didn't have to have both of my arms together uh, in the same place. So it it's absolute madness. It, it, it is very much like a 2D Rocket League where you're just fumbling the ball into the goal and trying not to let the opposing team do the same. It's got your typical programmer art visuals and a questionable screen filter, but I could have very well enjoyed my time with Laser Cup. But you made it damn clear that you don't care about people who want to play with a mouse and keyboard, at least uh, if they use their mouse on their left hand, so let me be clear. I don't care about the game either. Thank you for the keys, but if you're gonna spit in my face, well, I'd rather you did it in person. It's far sexier. One share. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, over here, everything worked out of the box, technically, man. This is on uh, Debian Bullseye. And on a 1920X, the Red Ripper, 32 gigajoules RAM, all that fun stuff. Now, the menu selection with the keyboard, that's a bit all over the place, man. I'm just going to say use the controller out of the box on that, man. And setting that resolution has a fun little bug where it likes to jump up a notch while you're doing that, which will just fuck things up left and right. So, be warned. Now, the controller worked without issues, which is good, because that's really how you got to play this game. If you play uh, any type of uh, motoring vehicle uh, games with a keyboard, you're a defective human being. Uh, hey, this effective human being kicked your ass a couple of times last night. Yes. <laughs> I didn't say you were unskilled. I just said you were defective. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> so, oh, is that what you were playing with last night on the side? <laughs> yeah, it's I was super defective. With the keyboard. So you were cheating. <laughs> Got it. Um, <laughs> check this out. Uh, performance. Well, I mean, you can play this on a calculator. I mean, this will work just fine on Intel integrated graphics and all that fun stuff. Now, let's talk about fun because if I called Laser Cup a prototype, it would be me being extremely kind because, you know, you have one arena, one soundtrack, one car model, and a hipster Unity shader that blurs shit up. Thanks for the sub, Pedro. Eat that. Basil. <laughs> Thank you, Basil. Uh, yes. Thank you. Basil. <laughs> Basil. <laughs> He's been Basil. very clear. It's Basil. <laughs> now, I'm going to go about this, man. When it comes to control, you flail about and occasionally the ball goes in someone's goal. That's it. Next match, more of the same. Now, did you knock your hand into anything at any point? No, I didn't. I have self control. Ah, um, I did. <laughs> to go back to Pedro's uh, Rocket League analogy, Rocket League works because you can actually get good and tame the RNG. RNG elements exist in Rocket League, but. With enough skill, you can do things like when they were doing the Rocket League Cup on Twitch, you would see people flip around and fucking air for the entire game because you get that good. That that mechanic would never happen in this game. There's just too much slidey bullshit because while you are provided with the occasional power up, there's no indication as what the hell's going on until it's unleashed. I think at some point a magnet shows up occasionally. It, it's glyphs, moon glyphs you have to decipher. And uh, then the ball, you know, it'll fly completely out of the arena. Yes, that actually happened. Well, Joey, yeah, that, that did. The, the AI <laughs> fucked up too. They're just like, we're going to get it. They're bouncing at the corner. There's like, we're going to get it. Dude, yes. Yeah, we all just went to the one quarter and we waited and then we just eventually restarted. Now, the big note with Laser Cup is the slide around on glass while pointing in a direction and smashing that boost button driving mechanic because that's all there is to it. It is chaos if that's your thing. Now, personally, you can kill about 10 minutes with this playing against the AI. And possibly another 10, you know, playing with somebody online. You better have somebody lined up to play with online or it's going to be forever alone mode. But after that, you've seen it all. There's nothing to it. I mean, it's the same map, same players, same power ups, no variation. If this was early access or, you know, somebody had sent this to us as, you know, a hobby project they were working on. Maybe something they'd put up on itch for people to go play around it. That'd be infinitely kinder. I believe we all would be. But, you know, this is marketed as a baked product. So I'll give you another note too. It's been rare. Now, it's not necessarily like anything's terribly broken with this game. It's just there's not much to it to justify. It's saying. not finished. There, there, there's clearly. like 40, there's 40% 40 of a game here, right? Like the base mechanics are down, but that's it. There's like nothing else. Well, back to pocket cars, man. Like pocket cars has got the seeds to a game in it. Yeah, the Pocket Cars has all of the base mechanics down. It just needs more content to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. This doesn't even have that. 
Well, I, I mean, like, I don't, I don't know. I get big Atari vibes from it. Like, it's clearly a ping pong from the visual style. Oh. It's supposed to be like a Tron thing. It's supposed to be minimalist. But I feel that kind of like uh, what, what the, the game we were, we were looking at uh, last week. No, no verbal communication at all. Mm-hmm. But it does a good job of, like, conveying what you need to do. This... Yeah, flail around, maybe, maybe. Hope for the best. In its current Dude, this state. one has a lot more text on screen. <laughs> the, the, that right there says volumes because... I'm going to yeah. say this, man. For the price, <laughs> you probably don't want to fuck around with it. But hey, it exists. Maybe rethink it. Come back, blow our mind next time. Mm-hmm. Laser Cup 2, Electric Boogaloo. Coming up next, we got some hate mail because I can't keep falling in love with you anymore. And wouldn't you know it, this, uh, after a very, very disappointing, uh, transquisition, it's about time we put a very, very disappointing, uh, period at the end of this particular podcast, because I'm not entirely sure what I was going with that, because that train of thought led me down a very dark path and I had is, to is, is that screech like colon, very quickly. <laughs> col- colon open bracket or period open <laughs> It, uh, I don't know what it was, but it wasn't good but hey if you have an idea of what would be good or you'd like to let us know um exactly what your dark thoughts were you can you absolutely can you can go to linux gamecast you fill it fill the form and make sure you pay attention to the requirements at the top if you're a game developer and after seeing that you'd like us to have a look at your game we can (laughs) just make sure we get three keys because if we don't well, no one's going to like the outcome of that either. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so a while back, um, Pedro was doing a series called, um, I don't know, Pedro does the series. It was about some dude in the desert. Wasteland. Full radio- three. <laughs> Bear, Bear radio- radioactive moo cows were everywhere. And they were doing the thing. Double-headed. Of- Radioactive and um, radioactive two-headed fire breathing moo cows. I don't want to fuck with a non-radioactive two-headed cow, Pedro. <laughs> that's fair enough but yeah uh david had some comments originally uh saying that i was a little bit unfair about uh, my opinion regarding fallout new vegas and the fact that some people on the internet seem to be completely blind to the fact that the game clearly wasn't finished but whatevs uh the um then we had a bit of a hate mail about it and now david's back with a reply to our hate mail thanks for reading my comment uh complete with the creative uh, pronunciation of analysis at uh one hour four minutes and 40 seconds and yes i do mostly agree uh, agree with pedro's analysis uh even if he is rather anal uh, towards uh new vegas fallout 3 doesn't have as much complex faction stuff going on but it is indeed arguably superior in terms of the open world creator narrative goodness something i I value highly in any RPG and subjectively its atmosphere, locations, characters, etc. will appeal more to some people. Me! Uh, and uh, uh, he says, I love New Vegas and Fallouts 1, 2, and 4, but Fallout 3 has more of a special place in my heart, perhaps in due part to it being my introduction to the series, so I may be uh, analytically biased. <laughs> Anywho, cheers guys, you're awesome. Ouch. And, and I, 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 I'm I with you on the OG Fallouts. Fallout 2 was, is, is my all-time favorite game. It, uh, with Fallout 1, they did a very good job of establishing what uh, Not Wasteland was going to be. But with Fallout 2, they decided to not take themselves terribly seriously. So the game has a lot more humor, a lot more uh, fourth wall breaking stuff, which I love. So best one of them all. My all-time favorite video game, Fallout 2. <laughs> mm. Never played it. I'm good. Yeah, having <laughs> having played none of them, my Fallout hot take is that the first one is a superior one, and everything else is just derivative and poo-poo. <laughs> you should try them. <laughs> Send your hate mail to Pedro at No, no, no it's my whole thing when I was playing, not playing, but just watching Fallout. I'm like, that's a fucked up Skyrim mod, because... Bethesda, they, man. Admittedly, Fallout 3 and New Vegas were basically Oblivion mods because they didn't change the engine much. Uh, you know, I, I, I want to I change my answer. My favorite Fallout is Apocalypse World. Thank but, you for coming to my hey, man. Let, Let's be honest. What, what do you really expect from a Microsoft product? Blue screens? <laughs> yes, they are now. <laughs> both, <laughs> <laughs> both, 
both New Vegas. Oh, hey, they bought Obsidian too. Mm-hmm. So yeah, everything. <laughs> what, every everything under the irradiated nuclear desert sun is belonging into Microsoft now. Man, yep. all the cows are gonna have two heads from this point. It's the moose screen of death. The moose screen of death. Oh man, <laughs> that that's hurtful to get out of here on. But you know what? We got to. Cue the music. You can always find us around uh, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. If you're one of the beautiful people making this show possible, hop in our Discord where the pre-pre super shows and takes place. We're there um, talking all type of mad shit. Ideas, plans, testing audio, video, you name it. If you want to get in touch with me during the week, again, hop in Discord. That's the easy way to do it. But I am on the social media thing at Finstone on Twitter and just at Vin at mass.linuxgamecast.com. My name is Jordan Swung. I am only a one-headed nuclear radioactive cow. Uh, my udders spew nonsense. Uh, the stream of thought goes to uh, twitter.com slash the burning fool. My stream of bits goes to twitch.tv slash burning fool. And I uh, would absolutely ro- uh, love to ride a Brahmin at some point, uh, but I don't think I'll live that long. If the Fallout uh, timeline is anything to go by, 2077, that's the end but hey keep drinking I am you're Machines. sure to make it you, if you want to talk fall out to me at an accounted for on twitter that's uh that's where we can hang out or on discord we can do that too gentlemen what did we learn this evening that you shouldn't mess with a two-headed non-radioactive cow Fair that point. jordan spews utter nonsense and that you hate <laughs> you you just learned that <laughs> today <laughs> <laughs> you just mentioned it. <laughs> I mean, I, that's not a revelation, though. It's not, it's not new you information. You I'm paying attention. <laughs> I mean, it's been eight years. That's, I'm that's be your own fault. Network shit. That's what I learned. Patrons, majestic awesomeness yeah. incoming. Yeah, we got to thank our executive producers, Alias, Barb Bramp, Scott Michaud, Miss Fox Dog, Arthur and the Atomic Ass, Meg G. Empty. Drummer, our lone little Nikki fan, Darkwing, Dark motherfucking keep, wings. Keep, keep, keep it, keeping it with Ozzy Osbourne. You got to see monsters, <laughs> Jack, Renault, Ryder X, Muckin' Up, Paul, Veronita, Justin, and Kerf, and Kerfrostwa. Epic rap battles of history. We got Chad P, Marston, System T, Craig A, Trinay, Alina, Dak, Cam, Smash the G, Chris, Stephen, John, Benjamin, and all the channelings like Jason, Lord Mocha. Joel, Kyle Linux cast, Giovanni, Dirty Dean, Christopher C, Reginald G. Ooh, Door to Door Geek, Dirty G's, Ed Mac, uh, Colin T, Che, oh, Che's on there again, uh, <laughs> Thomas, Double Jonas Chay. Rolo, Civ E, Frezzo, Chris G, uh, Michael W, Dementor, Zeno, Daniel Belric, and library.tv forward slash at Nixon's Pyramid. Yes. May or may not exist. I don't know. I'm, I'm changing my mind on it. It's like Schrodinger's podcast. Well, Schrodinger's link at the end of the podcast. Shh. We're all dead now. You collapsed the wave function, Pedro. <laughs> I divided by zero. Oh, no. Five dudes.